Joe um, seems cool, but that tweet about anti-racism was kind of freaky. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that most likely she was not aware of the context that surround those phrases. She it's, seems it's, like it's, a normie. I talked yeah, to her but, real but quick. Yeah, but listen, uh, it was kind of weird for me to see the, the, the libertarian candidate telling people we must do anything. Yep. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Yep. No, 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 no. Yep. Must do something? I don't mm-hmm. care if she said we must have, you know, uh, uh, you know, Twinkies from the, from the gas station. I'd be like, we mustn't do anything. Don't tell me what to do. I totally agree. That, w- that, was, that was it for me. I mean, granted, I think the anti-racism stuff is just like legit racism. Just yeah. with a different name. Yeah. It's clearly racist. When yeah. Spencer retweeted Ibram Kendi the other day, you know, and really? was, you didn't know that R- Richard Spencer. <laughs> he did? So oh, Ibram crazy. Kendi. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He said Amy, not wrong, right? Amy Barrett. Yeah, when Amy Barrett, someone Kendi was, was criticizing Amy Barrett because she adopted Haitian mm-hmm. kids. Yeah, and so then Spencer just goes, "He's not wrong." Da da da, and it's that's like amazing. But they, you know, they, you know, they like doing. They like saying, "Well, uh, you know, he's just pretending so that he can yeah. hurt the Democrats." It's like, what are you talking about? The dude's been completely honest. Like he's he's comfortable with being called a white nationalist. I'm not. I'm I'm not convinced he's lying about what he's saying now. Yeah, yeah. And there are a lot of people that that I know that I'm friendly with that uh, or that I'm friends with that are of the same mind. They're like, "Oh, I think it's a, you know, it's he's he's lying. He's only saying that to yeah. to help Trump and blah blah blah." But if Spencer is honest about his white nationalist goals, which I don't see any reason to think that he's not, he definitely didn't get out of Trump what he was hoping to get out of Trump. He Tr- said Trump that. passed no legislation that benefited right. the whites, you know. So yeah. um, it makes sense that he would be, well, the guy that's going to support critical race theory and raise racial consciousness hopefully among white people is joe biden so i'm going to vote for joe biden and and if you if you understand it like that it makes sense the guy that's going to be saying it's okay to have critical race theory all over the place and hopefully have more white people being aware that they're white and blah 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 you know it's it's in my opinion it's a terrible thing that's not how you base someone's value but it makes sense if you're you know, if you're a racist, that's like, well, who's going to go ahead and make people think about race a lot? You know, you know about repealing Prop 209 in California, I right? I do. I do. So this is we, we talk about it quite a bit because it's probably one of the most shocking bits of legislation we've seen coming from the Democrats. It's Prop 16, repeal Prop 209, and it strikes the civil rights legislation from the California Constitution pertaining to public employment, contracting and education. So if you have Donald Trump, who says it is a violation of civil rights law to tell people that certain races are better or worse. That's critical race theory. And then you have the Democrats saying, we literally want to make it legal to discriminate based on race. Who do you think the races are going to vote for? They're not going to vote for Trump. Trump's saying we have a civil rights law in this country. Yeah. The Democrats are like, we're, we're actively repealing those. Well, then all of a sudden, the white nationalists are like, oh, that sounds good, I guess. Yeah, I, you know, and I've had, again, conversations with people that I'm friendly with, and, and they either are unaware of what, the implications of repealing that law uh, are, or uh, they just say, oh, I don't think that that's going to happen. Or, they, that's what I hear a there's lot. There's a lot of dismissal. There's a lot of people that are, you know, and I understand not everybody's extremely online. I, and I, I qualify as an extremely <laughs> online person, fair enough. But just because everyone isn't extremely online doesn't mean that you know, that, that they're wrong, you know, and, and brushing off something isn't a good idea. You know, how they like to push that narrative of like the white supremacists everywhere and like the evil white supremacist militias are yeah. coming. So I, I have like I've, I've asked friends and I'll say, which do you think is more dangerous, the far left or the far right? And of course, the press, like, oh, the far right easily. And why is that? Because they're Nazis, they're white supremacists, all that stuff. I say, okay, so you think there's a prominent faction of like white supremacists, militant people going around and they're ready to take power and they're going to go to war and they're fighting for Trump and all that stuff. And they're like, oh, you know it. So don't you think that if you repealed the law that uh, made it illegal to discriminate based on race, these rampant white supremacist organizations take advantage of that and then start creating white only spaces? They're like, well, I mean, I don't know. I'm like, well, but there's a, there's a, a bunch of these people, right? They're everywhere. Aren't there? There's millions of them. Okay, so if you repeal this law, then they're going to start forming. Well, mm, oof. It doesn't make sense. No justification for what they're doing. It doesn't it make makes, sense. It doesn't. And I've heard a lot of uh, excuse making where they're like, well, I think you're looking too far into what it might be instead of what they're trying to do. And I was like, and? I know what they're trying to do. They're trying. What they're publicly saying is they want affirmative action back. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Did, the, did affirmative action go away in, in that's California? What it, that's, what, that's what basically, you can't discriminate based on race. You can't have affirmative action. Okay. I so didn't realize that they, that I thought that there were still affirmative action laws in. Uh, I, I, I don't know to what extent they do it, but 
what they're arguing is that the repealing of Prop 209, it's called the affirmative action bill, repeal yeah. Prop 209. Yeah. And, I, and I laugh because every, every, every activist website and every voter information database says this bill will make it legal to have affirmative action. And I'm like, you could write this bill will make it legal to have a white only government building. It does the exact same thing, but yep. they choose which one to highlight. Instead of giving the voters the information about what they're voting on, yep. they cherry pick the most, you know, the one that sounds good. It, it, you, you, could, you could even say, this one helps the state get, you know, do away with evil racism. Sure, yep. it's an opinion, it's, it's framing. That's what we're gonna, that's, that's what we're, uh, we're gonna get. Yeah, I, I think it's a, I think it's a, uh, a bad idea. Um, as I've heard people make the state's rights uh, argument, which I blows my mind because I'm like, you're you're making a state's right rights argument about racism. You realize <laughs> that we had a war about that, right? Yeah, that's what the the <laughs> argument that this yep. the South made was. We have the state's right to keep people enslaved, and we fought a war and said, no, you don't. Yeah, and now you're making that argument again. Well, it so blows my mind when yeah. when Joe tweeted this. She, we, she tweeted she tweeted that slogan it's not enough to not be racist we must actively be anti-racist clearly she doesn't know what she's saying the first thing is libertarian shouldn't be saying what we must do for one thing but the scarier thing is that she, her willingness to repeat it without knowing what it is is, is an, it's like outside of look if she was serious about it the anti-racist ideology is literal racism yeah they just put that anti in front of it the way I, I, try, I try to describe it to people is that racism is a spectrum and racism and anti-racism are the exact same thing yeah. with different with different goals. But the goals, uh, I, I should say, with different, um, what's the right way to, uh, um, they're the same goals with the same belief structure, but different emotions behind them. Almost, yeah, I think you're That's right, yeah. The only, thing, the, only th the only difference is our emotions are different. It's, it's, it's racism where they claim they love you, but they need to discriminate against you for love versus racism based, based on hate. It's, 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 it's to, to me, it almost seems like a mom mentality where you're like, I'm doing this for your own good. So let me just help you. You need me to make this difference for you. Whereas but it's, but other it's a, racism is like, I'm going to tell you what to do. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. So for her to tweet it out and then double down on it. Yep. And then the Libertarian Party doubled down on it. I saw a lot of people saying they wouldn't support the Libertarians over it because that's like freaky. I myself made a, a big tweet and got into it with some people that were Libertarians. Uh, got into it with uh, Nick Sar Sarwark, who was the LP chair. You're for not a, a real Libertarian. Oh, you know, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's how you know you're a real Libertarian uh -huh. is when someone tells you you're not a real Libertarian. Yep. Do you ever see the, uh, the Groundskeeper Willie meme? Yes. Damn, well, libertarians, they ruined libertarianism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, It's true. It's true. And, you know, so I I understand what you're saying. I got into it, like I said, with, with some of the, the left-leaning libertarians um, and with Sarwark himself. And I, I don't understand why uh, the discourse around that was so dismissive about people that had a problem with it. Yeah. Um, other than, you know, when you say, hey, look, anti-racism isn't what you think it is it's 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 not it, i describe anti-racism and racism uh like matter and antimatter yeah it's the same, the same thing it's just charged differently right yeah. that's that, like that's that. kind of like what yeah that's kind of trying try, uh, what i was trying to get at yeah it's like there's a different energy behind it but it has the same goal the same output yep. and i guess i guess the difference between that analogy though is if you took anti-racism and racism and put it together i guess <laughs> I guess you might actually get an explosion. I mean, it'd be kind of good if you could take all the racists and all the anti-racists and, and put, put them together, them together. No, and just blow yes. up. No, <laughs> no, no, I would love it. Because that, that's happened. A lot of, that's a lot of energy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, so what, so what do you like about, Joe? What's, what, what do you like about Libertarians? Uh, I like the, the party, fact that... The party. The, I, so I've heard you talk about um, the... I forget what it was called. The, the spectrum of... of caring for compassion and and how libertarians are just all liberty i forget what the uh, oh the uh, the moral foundations yeah the moral yeah. foundations and th I, i'm a hundred percent on the same page with you because my entire worldview is i'm not looking for any particular result i want people to be free and that's the that's the the what i hold you know as sacred people should be allowed to live their lives however they want and in any way that they see fit as long as they're not harming anyone else. Yeah. And I think that that's the best way to allow people to design their life 
in a way that they best see fit to, you know, to affect their happiness. There's some so, challenges there, though. For instance, sure. borders. Borders, yeah. 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 I, so it's big, big libertarian argument. I was very much an open borders kind of libertarian. And then COVID <laughs> made me go, yep. let hey, me rethink this. Yep. Yep. Um, because to, to be honest, the economic argument about borders to me makes sense, right? So you really shouldn't have any kind of uh, limitations on people going places to work. Um, and I'd always, I'd had, I'd had a grudging acceptance of borders because as long as there's some kind of uh, social safety net, you can't just let anyone come into the country and sign up for your social safety net. You right. have to have some kind of control over that because we're already a hundred trillion dollars in unfunded liabilities and and all of the economic arguments. Um, but then when when COVID hit, then I definitely was like, you know, it's probably a good idea for a country to have control over its borders and uh, and control over who's coming in and who's coming out. Yeah, the the. the, the that's the big libertarian argument I hear a lot. It's you're not a real libertarian because you know imaginary borders. I actually got into an argument with this very like relatively well known libertarian who like started threatening me because I'm like pro borders. Uh, the way I describe myself is I would I'm left leaning libertarian on most things, but realism makes me more liberal because yeah. I I think we need a little bit more authority, uh, not towards authoritarianism leading towards liberty, but a little bit. You need you need some kind of system in place to maintain. Yeah these freedoms because I guess the, 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 the concern is looking at it from a historical spec perspective the places that were just open and free to move about you get taken advantage of yep. by either you know manipulative forces yep. or physical forces so but anyway uh, to specifically onto the libertarian party though is there is there anything Joe Jorgensen like in terms of her policies that there's nothing specific about uh, Joe herself it's the libertarian libertarian party platform is pretty good uh a libertarian executive who's not looking to be because I'm, I'm on the same page as you are about uh, foreign interventionism and ending right, right. wars and stuff like yeah. that um, yeah. that to me is, is a very big deal um, I'm a very pro 2A kind of guy so gun rights and, and stuff like that uh, I would love to see the ATF abolished I would love to see a whole lot of government agencies abolished um, the police? no not the, not the police <laughs> um, FBI maybe uh, yeah, or or, or yeah, yeah. shrink the FBI. You know, yeah, that, that's that's where I'm, I'm I'm torn, especially because seeing like we have a lot of problem with the FBI, like to sort of set people up. It's not entrapment, but you send in a guy who then like starts nudging them. Come on, come on, do it, do it, and they're like, okay, fine, ha ha, you're under arrest. Yeah. It's kind of like, yeah, okay, you're justifying your existence. Yeah, that's what happened to Randy Weaver at the at the Ruby Ridge thing. Is they they were yeah. they were trying to get him to. <laughs> You know, oh, we got you on your shotgun was too short or whatever. And if you if you go and get involved with these guys, then we'll go ahead and look the other way. And it just, you know, went to crap. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. So come back to check us out when we go live. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. Hit the notification bell. And we are also available on all podcast platforms for free. If you want to listen to us there. Thanks for hanging out. And we will see you all next time.